Blunty's Adventures in Ultra Compact Content Creation. Hello again, I am Blunty. This is a multi-part camera challenge. This episode is all about... So to quickly fill you in, I'm in Melbourne right now. That's the Melbourne Convention Centre beside me there. All week here and long, PAX is going on. Big video game convention thing. Ton of fun, love it every year. But I usually come here with all my camera gear. This year, I decided to go ultra mobile, ultra light, do the whole thing only on my iPhone and shooting out of this little bag right here. This is my entire studio. And of course, sound is important in any video. Sound is at least 60, 70% of your video's quality. People will watch a video that looks a bit bad perfectly fine but if it sounds awful you can't hear what the presenter is saying or it's hissy or there's just too much background noise or it's hard to you know what I'm talking about so let's take a look at some microphone options and find out what is the best solution for this and do you need more than one I'm using a lav right now but I've also got a little shotgun mic let's put them against each other with comparisons to the built-in microphones as well and see what you need what you need to bother about taking with you can you get away with just one probably not I'm gonna find out though all right, so obviously we're outdoors. There's a fair amount of noise. There's a little bit of wind. There's city noise. You might hear a helicopter from time to time. Uh, lots and lots of people around, obviously, because it's a big convention. So this is how clear I can sound with this. The advantage of the lapel mic is it is on a nice long cable, so I can stand quite some distance away from the camera and still be perfectly mic'd up with it. Can't really do that with the shotgun mic, although there is another alternative to that I can show you in a second. But just currently waffling so you can hear how this microphone deals with this particular environment. Uh, the disadvantages of the lapel, I have it clipped to me all the time, which makes it nice and quick to set up. Disadvantage is obviously it is no good for recording anything in front of the camera when I'm behind the camera. This is really good for doing commentary when I'm behind the camera or I'm talking to the camera, uh, but not much good for anything else. Interviews, no good. Uh, performances, no good. Getting general uh, show floor noise, no good because it is deliberately designed and engineered to do this pick up my voice that's one thing it's good at so let's switch over to mics and we'll have a look so now you were hearing me on the Rode video micro it is designed as an on-camera microphone but you can use a little extension cord coming from the uh, cable it comes with uh, that's one of the other things directional microphone if I speak like this sounds worse than I speak like this got to be wary of that but you can use it fairly effectively as a handheld mic and I have done this on show floors before using it as an interview mic between two people like that and it's pretty effective it deals with sort of uh, ambient noise fairly well uh, as long as you set up your audio correctly uh, on the iPhone and Filmic Pro has very good uh, control over audio levels hopefully I've nailed it for this demonstration otherwise this will be pointless fingers crossed uh, but yeah usually uh, I use this just as an on-camera mic so let me fix that up for you so this is what I sound like, speaking at exactly the same level as was before, but now the microphone is mounted in its usual place on the camera. You should be able to hear me okay, it's not going to sound anywhere near as good as handheld or even the lav, but if I go ahead and come closer, uh, you should be able to pick me up a lot better. Sort of arm's length distance here, so selfie distance we'll call it, uh, just for the sake of, you know, is this appropriate for using for the vloggy style stuff. You're usually going to do that sort of selfie distance, aren't you, rather than sort of stand back in a more sort of mid joint presentation style thing. So you make up your own mind about uh, what works best for you. Me personally, because the lav is tiny, uh, I just keep it in my pocket and I've got it hooked up to me permanently and you know, the cable sits in my pocket. It's not a matter of, oh, is this worth bringing because it's so much weight? But for you guys, it will be, is this worth also buying? Because if you only had the money for one, I would definitely recommend the Rode Video Micro. If you have the money for both, get yourself a lab. It's going to make you know the presentation stuff a lot better sounding. You are now listening to me on the built-in microphone on the iPhone 11 Pro Max. At so this kind of distance, this couple of meters distance, this presentation style distance, I'm not expecting miracles. I'm mainly doing this so we have a control point of view when we do the comparisons to the other mics. Let me step a bit closer now at you know, what we call selfie distance. In a pinch, if you don't have any other mics with you, if you're just running again and you just want to get something on the fly and all, all you've got is your iPhone in your pocket, I'm absolutely happy to use this quality of audio. It's crisp and clear. If there was a lot more ambience than I would otherwise be happy with if I had my other mics with me, so. All right, so here we are in an audio recording nightmare, the worst possible solution I ever find myself in when I'm trying to do audio, the show floor of an expo like this. It's difficult to find a spot to record in, difficult to find a spot where you're not gonna be drowned out by copyright strike music being blasted by the booth. 
You've got every booth blasting noise out, multiple computers at every booth blasting noise out, up to 80,000 people at this venue all blasting noise out, all shouting at each other over the noise of all the announcements and the crowds and the cheering. This is not my ideal situation, so finding a mic that even closely works to any practical extent has been a challenge for this. The lapel mic is the best I've got so far. So let me do the switcheroo and I'll show you the handheld Rode mic next. So now we are on the Rode Video Micro in handheld mode. This is usually for the last few years when I'm using my real camera, my dedicated camera, what I've used for interview situations because obviously the lapel microphone is no good for that. So it's been performing okay. I do have a more dedicated handheld mic, but it is much heavier uh, and there's a lot more, you know, it's just, it takes up a lot more room in the bag. So I switched over a few years back to trying to use this more often because it's on the camera anyway. So I just detach it when I need it and then use a super lightweight little extension cord to get it done. But it does the job okay. And in some cases better than the lapel because it's a bit more directional. So I can put it directly at my face like this and more importantly at someone else's face when I'm going to talk to them. However, when it is actually mounted on the camera at an event like this, it is basically useless for anything but environmental noise or anything actually really quite close to the microphone. Uh, limited use, but again, just with that lightweight extension cord, being able to take it on and off the camera gives you an extra utility that you don't have with this. So here we have our comparative shot, which is on all the microphones on the iPhone. I'm projecting quite a lot in the hopes you can hear me above the noise of the show floor and the crowd and the scenes and the music and everything. But I have no expectations that this audio will be what we call useful. So there you are. What do you think? Let me know what you think. Let me know what your reactions are. Was there something I forgot to mention or double check? Do you shoot in a different way? Would you want me to check out a different type of gear as an alternative to something here? You know where to put it in the down below. While you're there, hit the subscribe, hit the bell, hit the thumb, do whatever nice things you like to help, you know, help, help the channel fight against the tyrannical rulership of the YouTube algorithm monster. Because I can't beat it alone. I need your help. Is that, is that, is that audience engagement? Am I doing it right? I'm going in.